So look, a big thing that a lot of people have been talking about over the past uh, couple weeks, uh, and I did do like a little mini reaction to it on the channel, uh, obviously the Oblock 6 trial, you know, the trial of the people uh, from Oblock, the Black Disciple Street Gang, and infamous Hip Hop Collective, if you want to call it that. Um, they're facing trial, man, the Oblock 6, as they're calling them. Uh, the six that's actually quite funny i just googled o block six and your boy is number one on the list that's actually crazy appreciate that appreciate that youtube google alphabet all that stuff um so yeah they're they're facing trial man um you know it's uh it's a big deal um and i'm really just trying to find any updates that i can about the story um you know this is sort of a big a, a big news story um, but there's a few, like, a few new legal documents that have dropped. I'll be honest with you, I haven't actually read these yet, so maybe we can just, like, run through these uh, and get, like, a little bit of an understanding um, to try and understand what's going on. So let me just check, like... So, I believe... I've got some documents. So, document 191... Um... So this one dropped. So this is a, a 60, I believe it's a 68 page document that goes through the key events leading up to the murder of Duck. Um, so this has apparently been posted on Shyrakology. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could kind of, yeah, I could spend the whole stream reading through this thing. Um, you know what I'm saying? This this could just be like a regular thing that we do. But anyway, this is uh, this is like new paperwork that's dropped relating to the uh, relating to the situation. There's a whole bunch of new stuff in here. I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure I'm going to have time to like go over all of this. This is actually a giant document. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of different documents here. Um, but essentially, like, there's a, lot, there's a lot going on. Okay, there's a lot going on. Um, there's informants. Um, there's there's just there's a lot going on, basically. So let me just like skim through this and see if there's anything interesting to go on. So like here, we got, uh, we got the overview of the conspiracy to murder Colton Weekly, a.k.a. FBG Duck, in aid of racketeering. So the murder of Duck is basically getting thrown in with the sort of racketeering, like the running of the racket of the O-Block gang, if you want to call it, right? So this kind of breaks down in detail. Uh, you know, these are new documents. or well, not, uh, not entirely new documents. A lot of this stuff's been going around. But like, um, I'm trying to see what the most recent thing like, was new. Um... Yeah, so this is basically going uh going through like a lot of the early events that went down. So um so this says like okay, so Turpin, um, so he was which one was he? Ralph Turpin. So I believe he was the person that like gave the drop on FBG Duck, right? So Duck was allegedly shopping for clothes for his son's birthday. So the thing about this is right, look, none of this is really like super new information, but I think to me, like the specificity and like how specific this stuff goes into detail of things that we maybe didn't know. We all knew that FBG Duck got caught on August the 4th, 2020 and was gunned down outside the Dolce & Gabbana store. But like the exact movements that led up to that moment are slowly being pieced together in a much more forensic manner by this kind of document, right? So Duck was shopping uh, for clothes for his son's birthday in Milani Boutique, in the Gold Coast. So it was 3.59 p.m., okay? Ralph Turpin, who is the guy who kind of alerted O'Block to Duck's presence there, he entered the boutique and noticed him, okay? They all, like, this this war between the GDs and the BDs, okay, it's long established, okay? So as soon as, um, as soon as Duck was spotted, right, Ralph Turpin immediately calls the rival gang members who he knew would come downtown to kill Weekly. It's like, we kind of know all this, but it's like, it's, when it's actually laid out like that, the idea that this guy is basically out here scouting for people to kill. Um, so he made at least one phone call inside the boutique to let them know, to basically tell them, come downtown and kill him. Like, it, it's sort of like, when you're so into Chicago drill music, this stuff becomes normal. You become desensitized to this. But just imagine that. Like, a dude that's in... You know, a child's clothing store, or a Milani boutique. I don't even know what that is. Like, it might not be child's clothing, but that's what he was there for. Like, literally the idea of, like, you see the dude and you're just like, I need to call the gang. Be like, he's here. Come and kill him now. I'm also here. Come and kill this guy. It's crazy. So, this, I thought this was just, like, interesting language. It says, basically, the, uh, the Black Disciples, they begun scrambling to make their way downtown. It's like, they got the drop on Duck, and they're just all rushing, like... 
are, you know, one leg in their pant, just rushing out the door, man. Uh, and they all jump in, in two cars uh, and drive down there, right? So they caught Duck outside of the Dolce & Gabbana store, and he was waiting to go inside. It was like a queue. Um, and so what I think was interesting, like, they each exit from the car. They fire 38 times in 12 seconds, and they hit Duck 16 times. Um, which is just crazy, man. It's just a crazy amount of times to get shot, like... All of these guys, you know, this is like some Wild West shit. They're all jumping out of the car. They're all shooting at this guy. It's it's literally a hail of bullets. Um, so this one is actually crazy because it's like after the uh, after the murder, um, I believe it was Los, he had just purchased his Ford Fusion on July 28th, 2020. Literally, what's that, six, seven days, like, before the murder he returned it to the dealership immediately after the after the murder so like again it, it just like we know this stuff happened but it's like when you see it so specific of like you went and bought your car on july the 28th probably not with any intention to go and murder somebody and it's like as soon as you do the drill you're just like i'm taking it to the dealership to to turn it in to swap it in like i wonder whether he re returned it for a refund or whether he did like a, a trade deal and probably lost money and he they're just like why are you returning this car so quick and he's like no reason no reason at all um well we're you know we can only offer you 2000 for it you're going to make a loss that's fine that's fine like it's crazy to actually like put yourself in the shoes of these guys that are going through these situations um but anyway um they're saying that the guy that lined them up ralph turpin he was captured on audio confessing what he had done inside the boutique even though he didn't know he was being recorded i mean that's crazy um, so this is like more of a general breakdown of, of O Block as a as a gang, essentially. Um which is interesting, you know. Uh, th this was an interesting point. It's like so one of the cooperators, they testify um that the who the leaders of O Block are. Uh, and they said that one of them was Boss Top, who as we know is a very prominent rapper and I don't know what I would say, member of the O Block group. Uh, of people uh, in a better sense of the word duke who as we all know is uh you know what i'm saying a very popular individual sometimes stealing cameras from vloggers outside of oblock if you remember that or uh also known for smashing I, I don't even know how to put this he he recently uh announced that he was having a baby with the widow of lil dirk's brother d thang you know a lot of people have been feeling away about that i mean you know li life does go on people do get new relationships and then bj who you know, prominent uh, affiliate of the O Block group, who we've seen many times, um, as well as Charles Liggins and Davon Bennett, Mr. King Von himself. So, you know, the indictment, like, it's interesting to think that, like, had King Von still been alive, he would have been probably seen as the kingpin of this operation. You know, he would have been the head honcho. Who knows, man? Who knows what would have happened? Who might have flipped on Von? You know, he's he's got all of these kind of uh, songs and stories about hating people that tell and hating snitches and stuff like that and you know he he would have been front and center in that situation which is uh which is pretty interesting but um uh essentially i think this is interesting because it's like it's the police's version of what's been going on in oblock obviously like a lot of people that want to defend oblock and the black disciples and their favorite rappers you know it's like they're not a gang they're a family they're just a hip-hop group all that stuff but, um, you know, according to the government, according to the state, one of their cooperating witnesses will is willing to testify that O-Block members actually made their money by committing burglaries and robberies, selling drugs, um, literally controlling the drug trade inside of Parkway Gardens, which is O-Block, um, as well as, you know, using vacant apartments, aka bandos, to store firearms and narcotics, and nobody can sell drugs in O-Block without the permission of O-Block members. So it's interesting. It's like when you're just looking at this as like a hip-hop collective, it sometimes is like you got the blinkers on and you can't really like take in that like the way that the the state and that this indictment is kind of painting a picture of O-Block as a gang, they're painting a picture of, of this sort of like old school, you know, mafia type organization that is controlling the drug trade in a specific area you know the the way it looks on instagram live if, if you saw my video about the murder of fbg duck you know there's videos of these guys literally selling weed like they're on instagram live with the packs that they're selling and being like selling that real czar and like you know what i'm saying oh, i made two thousand today all this stuff like they're openly you know running a drug trade on, on this block at least according to this indictment and footage that circulated on instagram um which is just interesting, you know, it's like, this is like a real, you know, these guys are the sort of Al Capones 
of this generation, you know, the, the Chicago outfit in a sense, that they are actually running the drug trade. It's not just a music thing. It's not just get backs and shooting at people for no reason. Like they're actually running this like a business. Um, and it's interesting like to, to see it put in such kind of legal language. Um, like, according, like we all know this stuff from the music, but hearing it laid out in this very like legalese way is quite interesting. According to Cooperator 2, O Block members are expected to shoot at opposing gang members, and that is the only way to rise through the ranks of O Block outside of having a lot of money from selling drugs or making music. Now, that's really interesting, right? Because it sort of says that, well, it's not the only way, right? But it's saying that the, the only ways that you can progress up the ranks, and there is a ranking system in the O Block gang, is literally shooting at ops making a lot of money from either selling drugs or making music and that's the that's the messed up thing about this indictment is like what they've done is they've essentially created a scenario where it's like the music is actually part of the criminal enterprise i'll be honest i don't know i might catch some heat for saying this it wouldn't surprise me if the state came and seized a bunch of money from king von's family man like if his music was as part of a criminal racket you know, he was profiting off of death. Let's be real. I know people want to hate on me and say, oh, you're you're profiting off violence. Like, you're profiting off of this black pain and, and all this stuff. And it's like, okay, fine. But also, like, realistically, like, let's be real. I'm a journalist covering a, a international phenomenon of gangster rap, right? I'm not just milk. I'm not hip-hop daily. I'm not just milking this, this black pain for a laugh to maximize the amount of money I'm earning. Like I could earn a lot more money if I like automated my whole channel and dropped a video on this shit every single day that's 10 minutes long. Like I actually see myself as like a journalist and an artist and essentially somebody that's like actually creating compelling pieces that help people understand like a social phenomenon that's going on all over the world. But at the same time, like, if you want to level that same criticism at King Von, like, this guy's actually killing people. He's actually making music that makes money off the back of murders, off the back of taunting dead people like Tuka and Man Man and Duck. All of this stuff, like, actually, as it says in the indictment, as part of a criminal enterprise, people that actually rise up the ranks by making money from music. And, you know, that if you've, if you've made $100,000 selling dope in Oblock, the feds are going to come and seize your assets. If you spent that on a Bentley, the feds are taking that away. Why should it be any different? You know, maybe the feds should come and take all the money off of King Von's family. I don't know. You know, I, I would say that the way that I cover this journalistically is like actually very responsible. I really do try not to glamorize and glorify this lifestyle because it's really not glamorous. Like King Von lived a glamorous life, but realistically, like where, where he ended up and where that story ended, no disrespect, but it wasn't glamorous. He didn't go out in a glamorous way. He didn't get to do all the things that he wanted to do and protect his family the way he wanted to to essentially and it's like it's not really something to glorify or, or glamorize you know but we should be able to talk about it but anyway um you know it, it, this is interesting as well killers have more respect within oblock than people who just shoot and killing a high profile opposition member often referred to as a op will increase status within O-Block even more. Now, that's really interesting. It's like, look, Von was basically seen as the chosen one, as the goat from this group. Oh, my drink's gone. Gone. New drink. Von was seen as, like, the goat of this group, and, you know, he was allegedly killing all kinds of people, right? Um, so, anyway, you know, they talk about, like, the murder of O.D. Perry and, uh, and K.I., uh, a lot of famous stuff. Um... This is interesting. I didn't know too much about this. Obviously, Cooperator 3 testifies that he's witnessed murdered commit murders committed by O-Block members in St. Lawrence Territory. Specifically, the government expects that Cooperator 3 will testify that he witnessed the murder of Dale Fisher, a.k.a. Squirrel, in STL. According to Cooperator 3, Fisher was not a gang member but lived in St. Lawrence Territory, and he was murdered by the O-Block member T-Roy, uh, real name James Johnson, and 600 member D-Rose. So... It's kind of like they're talking openly about people from other gangs. You know, 600, it's another gang. But this stuff's just straight up on paperwork. You know, D. Rose is, I think, doing 40 years in jail for another murder. But um, he's getting caught up in this thing, man. And, and who knows, you know, at a certain point, like, they might start sticking more charges on more people. Because, look, it's an open secret, man. Whether it's me, whether it's Chicago Scene 88, Hip Hop Daily, Academics. Everybody knows all these murders that are taking place that are supposedly unsolved committed by like famous chicago demons and it's only a matter of time before the feds come back and try and try and mop up all these old unsolved murders you know they're incentivized to try and work this stuff out um 
now look this is the part where uh essentially it kind of you know you cooperate the three i'm pretty sure people are saying um hang on let me just double check so i don't get this wrong so like fbg butter he's denied being cooperator three obviously everyone's kind of been talking about this um, but like in here, it says Cooperator 3 was present for and witnessed the murder of his sister, Jakira, Gu Jakira Barnes. And like, I think, like, are they saying that they're sisters or that they're related? Um, but I'm not sure whether or not that's like, you know, a real thing. Um, I think I'll look that up. Like, So here we go, like, Butter is explaining that K.I. is his sister, but not his blood sister. So, look, maybe, like, that's not actually a real thing. Like, maybe that's not it. But I don't know. I don't know K.I.'s family tree. I've not had time to break that down. Um, uh, but they're essentially saying that, you know, they saw um, Von do the murder. And, you know, you've got another person. Witness 1 also testifies at trial. He observed this murder and later saw Von come back to the neighborhood after the murder and state in a threatening manner. Um... That Bennett was from Oblock. That doesn't really make sense. Stating that he was from Oblock. But anyway. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff. So this is interesting. We've got here that the, the cooperators will actually testify that Oblock is clicked up, so sort of affiliated with other black disciple factions. Obviously, we're talking about 600 uh, with the whole D Rose. But here's where things get a little bit dicey for our boy Lil Dirk and his good buddy THF Bezu, right? Cooperator 2 will testify that Oblock later became clicked up with Lamron based on 64th Street and Normal Boulevard in the early 2010s and THF, which stands for Trigger Happy Family, aka THF 46 and 44. If a gang faction is clicked up with another gang faction, they work together and inherit and adopt each other's conflicts. Now, you know what I'm saying? Lil Dirk is, is the legend of Lamron, essentially. Like, he is Mr. Lamron. And... All of this stuff's connected. All of these little details are just showing that, like, realistically, even if you think, like, oh, they can't use their music against you, all this stuff, like, the state knows, knows what's going on. They know what's going on better than me, better than any of these channels. They're deep into this, okay? So, obviously, they talk about uh, Duck's song, Dead Bitches, which, uh, you know, essentially came out, I believe it was the month before Duck was killed, and he just went crazy dissing all kinds of people um, that had died on the, on the O-Block side, you know? Um, so, this is kind of a little bit more kind of legal chat um that's going on here so i'm just trying to look for anything that's like new information um we're not really too fussed about like precedent and other other cases that are going to influence this case or at least i don't think that's what you're interested in um so what about the crawford clause do, 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 do. so obviously they're saying that like the people that did the murder like, as far as a motive, you know, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's easy to just say, well, they hated 63rd and Duck, and Duck, they'd been trying to kill Duck. But it's like, actually, now that we've made, now that we've actually established that members of Oblock rise up the ranks through killing and shooting ops, um, it says that, you know, all of these individuals, they conspired with each other to murder FBG Duck, specifically to maintain and increase their position in Oblock. And let's be real, it was only after Duck got killed that a lot of these guys started to get a, a, a light shone on them through rap. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but, like, no one was really talking about Muwop until he, you know, allegedly played a role in Killing Duck and then started rapping about it. You know, all of these guys were jumping on songs talking about, we're ducking no bodies, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, bro, it's quite obvious that you are... It's like, if you wanted to put this in, like, modern social media language... You know, it says here, like, they conspired with each other to murder Weekly for the purpose of maintaining and increasing their position in Oblock. You could just say they conspired to murder Weekly for clout. Like, we could remove all of this text here and just put clout. Because essentially, like, that's what it was all about. They did it. They weren't really doing it for money. Yeah, King Von came and broke 100,000 down for the block. And, like, yeah, I'm sure money was a motivating factor. But, like, this was all about clout. It was all about reputation and being seen as, like, a real hitter in Oblock. Um... You know, which is it's it's messed up, you know. Um so there's a lot more like specific information and like pictures here, which I think is actually quite interesting. Um obviously they're talking about, you know, the the defendants scrambling from O block to make their way once they had the information on him. So it's like 
Muwap literally ran across the parking lot to where Los's black Ford Fusion was, ran up the flight of stairs, um, ran past people in the stairwell, um, all running back and forth. Like, these guys literally were in a rush, running around, not really thinking about things. And this just goes to show you, man, like, you know, unfortunately, like, these guys threw their lives away. Again, we'll see how the trial works out, right? But let's be real, like, it's not looking good. There's a lot of evidence. And really, like, they just got the drop on Duck and were just in such a rush. They weren't really thinking about the evidence, the trail that they were leaving behind. They were just straight up, like, we're just going to run out there and do it and not think about it. And, and unfortunately, doing that left a huge trail. So they all got into these cars and they were seen leaving Parkway Gardens at 4.06 p.m. They got a Chicago police license plate, plate reader, police observation devices capturing the car traveling all over the place. And they got photographs. Like, they literally have photos of the cars, both of the cars, traveling to the murder. They got the guy giving them the drop. To me, it seems impossible to beat this case. There's no way. It's a federal case. Impossible. There's no way that they're going to beat this case. Hey, listen. This could be... I could eat my words. Maybe they'll find a way. Maybe they'll finesse it like Tay Savage. But, like... I can't see them beating this at all, you know. Real license plates on the cars, wearing their same, wearing their normal clothes, just rushing downtown to go and get this job done, and it's crazy. Um, so, like, this is talking about text messages that went back and forth. Um, and so this was interesting. Um, so Robinson texted Cooperator 4 to take the gun to Parkway Gardens because they were on, they were on their way to duck right now. Literally on the way... And look, here we go. Look, oh, man, I haven't even seen this. They've actually got the text, right? He's saying, don't worry, bitch. When I call you, you better come like a bat out of hell. He's like, bitch, I'm finna put the pipe up. Then wait, I got shit to do. He's saying, take the gun to the O. Oh, we're on duck right now. Check spot news. And then this is a picture. I assume this is a photograph of Duck's body laying in the street, which obviously we can't see the whole thing, but. Bro, you can't be doing this, man. We on duck right now. Like, that's it. Like, your fate is sealed. How are you going to beat this case? You got that and you're sending pictures of the body gloating. It is crazy. Um, so uh, this is quite interesting, actually. Um, so they're saying that Turpin, Ralph Turpin, who's the guy that essentially saw Duck and gave the drop on him. They're saying that he was on the phone, like giving the drop. He must have been frantically on the phone, like, yo, we got to come kill Duck right now. That was crazy. They're saying because he was speaking in a wild and agitated state, the security guard in Montclair literally begun to record him. And the security guard is witness three who may testify at the trial. So bear in mind, this guy is so ecstatic that he's got the drop on FBG Duck that he is just what he's in the Montclair store going wild talking about. Oh, we need to get him now, bro. Like, O Block, you're the most famous gang and group of rappers coming out of Chicago. Duck is the most famous and wanted op. Bro, you're attracting attention just being in the store talking about we on Duck right now. We need to come and smoke Duck. People start recording him. That's crazy, bro. And you can't really count on that. Like, they're saying that the security guard is here recording this dude. And, like, they've literally got the specific thing. Uh, sorry, the, the, the like, not full transcript, but talking about, he's saying, what's D-Thang's number, which is Lil Dirk's brother? And now they're sucking, sucking D-Thang into the situation, you know what I mean? Um, and, and that obviously has a connection to Lil Dirk. Um, so they're kind of, uh, you know, going back and forth. He's sort of uh, essentially, like just on camera setting up the situation and, and the story was that he literally specifically didn't like uh duck because duck was having a relationship with his baby mama um something like that so there was like a very real desire to have this guy killed i mean it's, it's crazy really when you think about it it's like this guy was jealous of duck duck was uh, allegedly smashing his baby mama so as soon as he sees duck he's on the phone like yo i don't like this guy this guy's messing with my girl come and kill him now and they did like I can't even imagine what, what kind of mindset you would have. I mean, people have pissed me off before in my life, but I couldn't imagine, like, seeing someone out that I didn't like and calling the hit squad. I mean, like, come and kill them and then literally witnessing them kill him and being like, yeah, I did that. Because really, none of this would have happened without this guy, man. And, you know, allegedly it's it's him being salty about this uh, past relationship. So, pretty crazy, man. Um... So Turpin's literally on there calling all different kinds of people on the phone. Um, following him along. There's just a lot of stuff. Okay, and so here we actually even see him, Turpin, on the phone outside the store watching FBG Duck dying in the street, which 
which is wild. He stood across the street on the phone for several minutes until he was murdered and then walking over to get a better look at Duck's body after he had got, been gunned down. I mean, I can't, I honestly, I can't even put myself in those shoes. Like, to see someone you didn't like make the call, watch a hit squad come all the way from the south side to shoot him dead in front of you, and then just you're just chilling on the block making different phone calls, just incriminating yourself, being recorded by the security guard in Montclair without even realizing it. My guy's cooked too. I mean, this wouldn't have happened without without his, his involvement. There's no, no two ways about it. So anyway... Like, as far as the hit squad actually turned up at 4.26, um, you know, people all jumped out. They all started sh aggressively walking up on Duck and shooting. Um, the woman that was with Duck actually shot back, um, which is interesting. So they're saying that, um, so the, the woman that picked up Duck's gun and shot back, the detail is not public for significant reasons that follow. So I wonder why that was. Um, but anyway, the woman actually got hit twice. Um, and the, the man... So Duck was hit 16 times. There was another man that was there got hit, hit three times. So they're really spraying up the block and just hitting anybody. Duck's girl is shooting back. And it's just... It's, it's a wild, wild story. Now, what is interesting here is... Um, they actually even go into detail on Los purchasing the Ford Fusion um, on July the 28th. So that's like a week, just about a week before the actual murder took place. Uh, where Los, Carlos offered essentially went and bought the vehicle so um he was accompanied by his ex-girlfriend and baby mother um he went and actually financed the vehicle he lied about his employment and even brought apparently fake pay stubs to create the impression that he was employed to get this car now he actually this is interesting i didn't know this so los got rumbled on august the 3rd 2020 literally the day before the duck murder which i gotta say like this is just a miraculous just random like you can't even really count on this happening. But the day before Duck's murder, he would have had no idea that this was going to happen. Um, like an employee of the, the store that sold him the car, they started going back and forth about his, basically his fake, his fake financing. And they were still arguing until the 4th when the Duck murder takes place. And he just takes the car back to the dealership. Like, it's like, oh, this is perfect. Like, my financing was fake. They want the car back. I'll just give it back as soon as I've done a drill. Like, let me just do a drill and then send it back. And this is crazy. So look, according to cell phone records and photographs of the car dealership employees' text messages, at 3.35 p.m., nine minutes after the murder of Duck, Los texted the car dealership employee and said he was on his way to return the car to the dealership. That's crazy. Like, literally, you're killing somebody, and literally within nine minutes, you're like, I'm going to return the car to the dealership. This is perfect. They're, they're on my case for the fake financing anyway, and I'm just going to spin the car back to the dealership and just take it immediately back, and it's all going to be gravy. Like, bro, that's, it's mental. Like, I can't, even, I can't even imagine, like, what's going through his head when this is going on. So anyway, um, the car ends up going back to the dealership. Um, he arrived at the dealership at 5.15 p.m. So that's less than an hour after the murder. Now, for me... I'll be real, I've never murdered. Don't plan to, ever. Murder's bad, in case you drill fans haven't quite got that in your head yet. But just the idea that literally you were smoking a... You were catching a body in the middle of the of the Gold Coast less than an hour before, and next minute you're at the dealership. Um, so, sorry, so his his baby mama arrived at the dealership a bit, uh, a bit before him. So it's 10.50, so about maybe just over an hour after the murder that he arrived to the dealership. Um... He essentially drops off the car, gives it back. Um, uh, but here's what's interesting, right? So Lois basically becomes aware in about a year later that there was a video on YouTube, not one of mine by it, by, just, just, to, just to make that clear. Um, there was a YouTube video that basically said the police scanner audio um, said that Offord's Ford Fusion was used in the car. And um, they basically worked it out. I think, uh, I don't know whether that was Chicago Scene 88. I know there were a few people kind of putting that out there. I know that there was another video by like a random guy on YouTube that was basically like breaking this down and had worked it out. Um, but imagine that, man. You're chilling watching YouTube, you know, watching the latest documentary about a murder that you did because I guess that ego just gets hold of you. Man, your heart must drop. You're, you're like, let me tune into some YouTube and see some videos people have made about murders that I got away with. Oh, shit. They know it's me. That must feel crazy. Um... Somebody texted the video 
to witness six. So that's the baby mama of Los who actually went with him to give the car back. And apparently Los basically said to his baby mama in response, people are preying on my downfall. They're hoping that they get locked up and so that they could have sex with his current girlfriend and that he doesn't have anything to do with the situation. Like that's, cra like, that's crazy to be like, hey, they're saying on YouTube that you your car that I helped you get back to the dealership was used in a murder less than an hour before. And you say, nah, they're just preying on my downfall. They just want to have sex with my girlfriend. Like, the sad thing is somebody probably is smashing his girl now, unfortunately. It's, it's the unfortunate truth of the situation. Um, anyway, he was uh, immediately... Uh, wait, is that the same guy? No, this is a different guy. This is some of the other people involved, they basically were texting back and forth to basically gloat about the situation. So, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he described himself as a shooter. Um, he apparently embellished his role and wasn't actually a shooter. <laughs> I didn't know this. This is crazy. So uh, Robertson, um, I forget ex which exact person this was, but he met with Conspirator 4 and said he was involved in the murder but he embellished his role he said he was a shooter but actually the surveillance video said that he was in the back seat and fell over as he got out the car to start shooting um but he told this person that he was shooting sh like shooting all up shooting all up and down the place and um that a woman started shooting so c murder shot her um giving details about the the case that were not public so i guess this is what we're saying earlier about no one actually knew that duck's girl got shot and this guy is basically meeting up with people and bragging and saying, like, yes, he murder shot the girl. I was busting shots, even though he wasn't. And they're piecing this all together. And, and there's, like, insider info that you wouldn't know unless you were there involved in the crime. Which is wild. It's absolutely wild. Um, anyway, he made several statements, I believe, that were not public about the offense, right? So he said outright that they used the Chrysler 300 to commit the murder and they, they used two cars. And bear in mind, like, this isn't public information. So it's just like obvious that he was involved, saying that all of these people were involved in the murder, that the cops seized the car after the murder, that um, Dipset is clicked up with O-Block and that's sort of the reason why it all happened. And that's why Los was involved, that King Von himself placed a hit on uh, Duck before the murder. And that's why everyone was participating in it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just just like just going to town basically and just revealing it all. All of this information that's not public that you had to have been involved in. Uh, and this one's crazy. So at 9.56 a.m. the day after the murder, Witness 7 um, sent uh, Robertson a link to the news story about the murder via Instagram. Um, and Witness 7 followed up saying, I know you ain't take your car to go and do this shit. Bro. He replied, unsend that shit. Bro, you can't. That is what it is, bro. Okay. Oh, so it's Kenny Mac. That's who we're talking about. Um, Robertson. That's Kenny Mac, who I believe was one of the drivers. Um, took his own car, man. Unsend that shit. I know you ain't take your car to do this shit. Ugh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. So the CPD actually seized the car the day after the murder, and he was trying to get it back. Now, look. Don't try and get back the car that you know was used in a murder. That's all I'll say, okay? So... CPD actually um, secured a search warrant for the car day after the murder. They seized it on August the 5th. So look, these guys were running around for nearly a year thinking they've got away with this, boasting about it, bragging about it. But the CPD were on their ass. The day after, they knew the car. They went and got the car. They went and searched the car. And during the search of the car, they found information for Charles Liggins, a.k.a. C. Murder, Quite literally, his his phone number and his Instagram account written on a piece of paper. Now, I, you know, I, I don't know what you could do to incriminate yourself more. You could maybe leave a trail of skittles leading back to the murder scene from your house. But leaving your personal phone number and your Instagram handle written on a piece of paper in the car that was used in a murder, along with a spent three fifty seven shell. Now, that's crazy. The, the three fifty seven shell shell casing was on the passenger side resting between the windshield and the hood. So you know that little, in my car, you know what I'm saying, in, in my whip, I get so many like old leaves and like, you know that spot between your windshield and where your bonnet or your hood kind of meets and there's a gap, there's like a recess down there. I always get leaves and gunk and all kinds of shit in there. It's hard to get out in my car. Um, you know, these guys fucked up, bro. They were busting shots. No one even realized a little shell casing got stuck down there. And bro, it's a wrap. 
the 357 shell casing matched the gun that was used in the murder. You're cooked. Basically, you are cooked. So, um, anyway, I don't really need to have these headphones on. Um, they seized the car, okay, and uh, Witness 8 testified that she called the cops on behalf of Kenny Mack, asking if they could have the Chrysler returned to her. Now, look, the fact that the cops have seized the car that you used in a murder is one thing, all right? But don't go trying to get it back. That's just another level of self-incrimination. Don't go trying to get your hands back on the car that was used in the crime. That's absolutely wild. Um, she then lied to the police saying that she had power of attorney over Kenny Mac's beds and that she wanted to, to get the car returned on his behalf. Now, look, why do you want the car back so much? Like, why do you want it back so much? Because you know, you know it was used in some, some fuck shit. But anyway, um, apparently Witness 8 called at least 12 times asking about the car now look calling about the car that was used in a murder once bad enough man but 12 times like when they don't return it on the second time that's just that's time for you to leave the country if you call twice and you're like yo can i get back my murder car i mean car can i get back my normal car that wasn't used in any murders and they're like nah we're still looking at it that is time to book the flights to dubai nigeria panama Argentina, not Kenya, because they'll they'll send you back from Kenya. I will, we learn about that in my new video, but not a good look, man. It's absolutely wild. So anyway, um, gonna chill in here, man. I'm about to go put a jumper on. Anyway, oh god, this is crazy. So um, Kenny Mac actually calls Sergeant Rivera asking for the police to be re asking for the car to be released to witness eight. On August the 7th, 2020, this is only three days after the murder. Uh, I guess it calls again on August the 11th. So on August the 7th, Sergeant Riviera indicated that he would need to come to Chicago police, fill out a form, show some identification to get the car. Now, the car was never retrieved, so I guess they're not entirely bad criminals. But after all that, man, don't call up 12 times trying to get the car back, and then when they actually say, okay... If you want the car back, you've got to come down and show some ID, and then you flake out. Like, what did you think was going to happen? They were just going to valet the car back to O-Block and just not ask any questions. Like, it's, it's crazy, really. It just goes to show you that, like, the whole decision to do the crime was made in a huge rush, and then everybody was just scrambling to try and cover their tracks, which is just crazy. Anyway, um, so, mm -mm, so then Charles Ligon, Sea Murder then would go on to make a lot of statements to conceal the conspiracy to murder Duck. So this says, on October the 14th, 2021, after the defendants had been arrested in the indictment, C. Murder spoke to an acquaintance believed to be individual H, so we don't know who that is yet, um, based on the telephone number called and the subject of the conversation. Now, during the call, Liggins instructed the person he called to tell Duke, who, as we discussed earlier on, is a heavy hitter in O-Block, who said that everybody needs to get new phones. This is over a year after the murder, bro. Like, now, October the 14th, 2021, now you're telling them to get new phones? Like, really? Like, is there any point at this at this point? Um, he would then go on further to discuss the murder with the person he called and describe the case as weak. Bro, I, I, I don't think... This is like a Shakespearean level of irony where you getting on a phone call to talk openly about a murder that you committed and calling the case weak... You calling the case weak strengthens the case incredibly. It's it's like such a dramatic irony that I can't even like can't even begin to like describe just how crazy that is. Honestly, um, he indicated that the law enforcement had actually shown him a video of the crime scene, but the shooter's faces could not be seen because they were wearing masks. So he's thinking, no face, no case. It's all good. As well as saying the video of him and his co-defendants running up and down the stairs at O-Block ain't nothing. So look, we put the masks on after we've already been filmed. Ain't nothing, man. After we've been filmed getting into the cars, we get into the car, put a mask on. A bunch of masked men are shooting up town in those t cars. And then they're driving back to O-Block and back to the dealership. Bro, definitely ain't, ain't nothing. Anyway... This goes on to discuss the O-Block chains. Now, we're very familiar with the O-Block chains, which is, uh, you know, King Von went to Icebox in Atlanta, put together several O-Block chains, which were kind of distributed to O-Block members. 
a lot of people that were involved in the duck murder did receive one of those chains. Um, you know, Von had the big chain. He was the big O. Um, well, this was interesting. So uh, the, the chains were allegedly $6,000 each. And I'll be honest with you, that ain't a bad price. Like, it kind of made me think that, like, I, I always see the videos of people shopping in Icebox. And I'm like, damn, I ain't never going to be able to afford no Icebox drip. Like, that was on another level to me. 6K, like, I might be able to stump that up, you know. I might be able to save up for a couple months and cop a little little 6k chain um but anyway um they bought, bought a bunch of these chains customized them and i always thought this was absolutely wild like these are gang chains these are like all the people that have died from your gang wick city 64 o block for life bro like this is some gang shit like there's no other way of looking at it um it's very very incriminating and then you got the vlogs of of the of them of Bon and Muwop like in the store, uh, copping the O block chains. Got pictures of all the killers, all the murderers wearing the chains. It's not a great look. Not a great look. Um, you know, saying Seethan got the chain. Los in the music video with the chain. Not a good look. Um, you know, this is uh, I believe this is C Murder's chain. It is. There's Long Live the Guys, and it's Sheroid Squad. I believe Sheroid was his brother. Um, his younger brother, Sheroid Liggins, that was killed in 2012. So it's like, it's just all so specifically tying them back to these murders and back to these situations. Um, you know, Moowop's chain, it's got like his dead friends that he's sort of putting on. Chino, Headshot King, Jado, T-Roy. Uh, what's that one? Sky? Shy? I don't know this one. But, um... Here's where it gets crazy, man. I'm talking about social media, man. These members of Oblock have been all over social media, not only repping their affiliation with Oblock, hashtag Oblock, but like, I mean, it, this is the thing. It's like, look, we can't, we can't pretend that Oblock's not a gang or that you guys aren't a member of it or that it's a rap collective. Like, and you're putting it everywhere. Like, C Murder Oblock, Sheroid Squad, Snitch K, Get Back Gang, Oblock. It's, it's pretty, um, it's just very in your face, you know what I mean? Oblock C Thang. Like, look, if I was giving advice to a bunch of gang members on how not to get caught, like, step one, if I, was, I, I should open, like, a consultancy and, and have gang members on and just be like, let me look at your social media and just tell you if you're snitching on yourself. And it's like, step one, is the name of your gang in your public Facebook? Okay, change that. Remove that. Like, snitch K as well. Like, come on, man. Snitch K... Like, you're snitching on yourself, bro. If you're really snitch K, like, if you're truly snitch K, I'm not going to say what you're thinking, but you know what I mean? It's, it's not really a good look. Um, anyway, they're referencing songs too, you know. In Offered's song, Never Change, um, he states multiple times throughout the song's chorus, Oblock, Mana Gang, this shiz will never change. Um, you know, it's not super incriminating, but it's just like... It's a mountain of evidence that affiliates you with the gang, and there's no other way of you trying to explain that away. Talking about everybody having O-block tattoos on themselves. I mean, it doesn't get much. You got it in inked on your skin. There's no denying that. There's no denying that you're a member of the O-block gang. Like, it's obviously a gang, and you're obviously a member, bro. You got it tatted right in the middle of your chest. Um, so, anyway, it's talking about a lot of statements that people made. Um, that just makes it very clear that people are members of O-Block, that O-Block is a gang that all of these people are a part of. And um, it, it's just like a whole bunch of thing, a whole bunch of things, you know, all the communication between these groups and these individuals. It just builds up like a very clear and vivid picture of, uh, you know, involvement in the murders. And it's just not looking good. Um, so I'm going to stop the O-Block analysis there. I've got a lot of other documents that we've actually dug up from the case. If you're interested, like, I'd be happy to keep covering these. Maybe, like, each time I do a stream, I could cover a different document and just kind of break it down and just... For me, it's really trying to pick out the details and the facts that haven't really been widely circulated or, or haven't had a much of a light shone on them um, to just help everyone get a better understanding of what's going on because this case is going to be pretty explosive, man, and I want to say I don't know what's going to happen, but I... I I do. It's it's not looking good, to be honest. It's not looking good for these guys. But yeah, let me know if you thought that was a good breakdown. If you want to see more of that stuff, let me know in the comments, in the chat, all that good stuff. But it is time to move on to something else.